Hi, Gary Steerman. It's Monday the 13th. Time for another daily update and a quick word about the dating on these daily updates. Some of you have written in and said the date doesn't exactly match the day and that does happen from time to time. I give the date uh, merely uh, to record the intended uh, date of airing for these recordings. And so uh, we're recording this one for Monday the 13th of February. Hope that helps. War in Israel. I've been saying now for some time that I think it's underway. A lot of people are saying it's coming. I think it's here. And, of course, the Bible does speak of a lightning war for the latter days in the Middle East. And it's described at the end of Isaiah 17 in this way. The 13th and 14th verses say, The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them. And they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind like a rolling thing before a whirlwind. And behold, at evening tide, trouble, and before the morning, he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. And I'm not the first to say about this passage that it suggests a lightning war, uh, uh, if you will, a high-tech latter-day war in which there is a a massive invasion. And of course, Ezekiel describes it in Ezekiel 38 as coming from the north and also from the northeast, I think, but mostly from the north. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But the thing about the war is the lightning speed of it all and the speed of reaction in which the enemy is wiped out. This, to me, speaks of latter-day technology. Uh, Let's talk for a moment about Ezekiel 38, and I want to make a statement about it because it opens in Ezekiel 38, uh, verse 2, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I've got a sheet here that I uh, copied from uh, the Gazanius Hebrew Chaldee lex- lexicon of the Old Testament, which was first printed in 1847 uh, by Heinrich Wilhelm Gazanius, uh, who was a German scholar, and he put together a uh, Hebrew lexicon. And about Gog, he says, in 1847, mind you, he says, uh, of, the prince of the, the prince of the land of Magog... Also of Rossi, Moschi, and Tibarini, who was to come with great forces from the extreme north to invade the Holy Land and to perish there as prophesied by Ezekiel. Now, when he names these uh, regions, uh, he, Rossi, Moschi, and Tibarini, he's talking about the entire extent of modern Russia. And so in 1847, uh, we have the the Hebrew scholar Gazanius in his lexicon making what was then a commonly held statement about the origin of this battle. It was to be from the far north, namely from Russia. Well, it's interesting that the Russian foreign minister is in Syria, uh, has recently come to Syria, is flying back. He's come to uh, possibly save the Bashar Assad regime, which is in danger of falling. Meanwhile, uh, we have some fascinating things happening in Syria, which we'll read about in a moment. Uh, Here is a February 9th dispatch from Debka file. The headline is, As U.S. and Israel dicker over Iran strike, American airlifts strengthen the Gulf. And I'm quoting here the opening of the article, as the U.S. and Israel carried on bickering over the right time to strike Iran's nuclear sites, their war preparations continued apace. Debka Files military sources report that that flight after flight of U.S. warplanes and transports were to be seen this week cutting eastward through the skies of Sinai on their way to Gulf destinations. That's the Persian Gulf, by the way presumably landing in Saudi Arabia at a frequency not seen in the Middle East for many years. And I would say probably uh, going all the way back to 1973 and the Yom Kippur War. 
Here's the next paragraph. The three international atomic energy inspectors who spent the last three days of January in Tehran had asked to meet the hitherto invisible head of Iran's nuclear bomb pro program, uh, Moshen uh, Fakhrizadeh. Now, Fakhrizadi is the general of the Revolutionary Guards and heavily involved with Iran's nuclear program. The Iranians have pretended not to hear. Uh, they also kept their inspectors away from any nuclear installations. A senior Obama administration official uh, termed the visit, quote, foot dragging at best and a disaster at worst. No one now doubts, and this is right from this article, no one now doubts that advanced centrifuges and stocks of enriched uranium have been moved to Iran's underground bunker site at Fordo near Qom, <coughs> which the U.S. administration has claimed its bunker buster bombs cannot reach and which Israel's defense minister Ehud Barak has defined as a zone of immunity. And so we have, and I think the key element of, of this news release was uh, that uh, U.S. warplanes and transports were seen this week cutting eastward through the skies of Sinai on their way to Gulf destinations. Uh, moving on to another Debka file release, this one uh, dateline February 8th, <clears throat> British and Qatari Special Operations Units are operating with rebel forces undercover in the Syrian city of Homs, just 162 kilometers from Damascus, according to Debka files, exclusive military and intelligence sources. Did you hear that? British and Qatari Special Ops Units are combining with special forces in Syria. This means that the Turks and the British are now uh, injecting themselves into the battlefield uh, of Syria. That's why I say I believe war has already begun in the Middle East. We have a very quiet uh, sort of uh, sub rosa motions of troops and, and war materials and supplies and airplanes and, and carrier task force groups all being moved into position amidst increasingly hostile dialogue. Well, we have uh, a, a report here that Tayyip Erdogan, the Turkish prime minister, has hatched more than one scheme for countering the Assad regime's recent crackdown on dissent. And then they go on to, and I don't have time to read this whole thing, but they go on to explain how the Turks now are, are strongly positioning themselves <clears throat> in order to be a major power uh, after what they believe will be the fall of Bashar Assad. And finally, I have a third report. This one is dateline February 10th, a successful joint exercise. And this is absolutely important to understand. A successful joint exercise carried out Friday, February 10th, demonstrated the interoperability of the U.S. Aegis and Israel's Arrow 4 ballistic missile defense systems, and most importantly, of their two radars, the U.S. ANTPY X-Band and Israel's ELM-2080 Super Green Pine. These are high-speed computerized radars that can pick up incoming ballistic missiles and then fire interceptors that will uh, destroy them before they reach Israel. And, of course, this is a joint U.S.-Israeli effort. Uh, this uh, successful test, and by the way, this, this has already taken place as of the news release on February 10th. Uh, this, this is uh, called a key milestone in the development of the U.S. Missile Shield's fourth significant preparatory step taken in the last 10 days in Israel. On the east coast of the United States, meanwhile, and we told you about this last week, uh, a large-scale uh, military exercise called Bold Alligator 2012 uh, is drilling uh, our uh, joint troops on how to scale an amphibious landing on a fictitious Iranian shore should the moment arise that we send troops into Iran. We are drilling our troops right now uh, so that they'll be ready in case, quote-unquote, in case something happens, they'll be able to uh, successfully pull off an amphibious landing 
uh, somewhere in the Persian Gulf, I assume. That's why I think you need to reread Ezekiel 38 and read it very, very carefully because it talks about Sheba and Dedan, that is the Saudis. It talks about the merchants of Tarshish, that is the Western interests that are in league with the Saudis. It talks about Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. Uh, it talks about uh, the involvement of Europe. It talks about the involvement of Turkey. Uh, this is a manual, basically, uh, on a latter-day Middle East war. And we see right before our eyes all uh, of the parties and the factors coming into play right now. And so I just thought that uh, I, I would update you on that. And, of course, we're always watching. Uh, we're watching news from the Middle East and around the world right here on Prophecy in the News. And uh, well, as always, I would advise you to keep looking up.